What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video we are working on the 2003 F-150 crew cab, or super crew I guess I should say, and we are dealing with some electrical issues. And if you know these trucks, you already know what I'm talking about. It's the gem module that has gotten water in it, and now it's doing crazy things. The video you're about to see was filmed a few months ago, so that's why there's a difference in the way things look. My point is I'm gonna go through the symptoms that I was experiencing. That way, if you are experiencing or think you are experiencing the same issue, you can verify it based on the symptoms I'm about to tell you, and then we're gonna dive into the repair. Now keep in mind, by showing you this video, I'm not telling you you should be doing the same thing. This is just how I went about fixing it. Of course, other than what I'm gonna show you, you should also reseal the windshield, especially at the top here, if not all around. A lot of times that is where the water gets in, gets on that gem module and starts shorting things out. Because that's the main issue here, is water is getting in there and making connections when it's not supposed to. So having said all that, let's get into the symptoms and then fix it. So I was getting in to get to work yesterday and I opened the door <laughs> And I, I wish I had footage of this and I don't want to recreate it. I'll show you why in a second. But I open the door and the first thing I see is the radio's on. So I said, okay, that's weird. I have the key in my hand. Then I noticed the HVAC is on, the blower motor's going. So I'm like, all right, why is the ignition on? I have the key in my hand. Now I'm gonna recreate part of the situation for you, but I'm just gonna talk about all the other symptoms. I don't wanna leave the battery plugged in for too long. And basically what's happening is either from the windshield or elsewhere, water drips down onto your, it's called the GEM, G-E-M, stands for General Electric Module. Basically, it's your body control module. It sits right in here. If you pop this out, that's your fuse box, your inside interior fuse box, and uh, the General Electric Module sits right behind it. What happens is water drips down, either follows the wires or just happens to drip straight down onto that module and gets it wet inside. Once it gets wet inside, the water starts making connections between points that should not be connected. So basically what was happening is my ignition was on without the key in it because inside there, it was activating the circuit as if the ignition was on. I had to go to work, so I drove it like that, which may have been a bad idea, but last night, here's what I recorded. And this part is a little scary. So what you heard is the water sizzling inside of that module, which is actually pretty scary. So what I did immediately is I unhooked the battery because I don't want this thing to burn to the ground overnight. Regardless, I'm gonna hook it back up for a minute now. I got some sparks, noises. As you can see, things are going nuts. And inside, same deal. And, uh, well, yeah. I can literally activate the blower motor with no key. Like this, I can control the HVAC. This is crazy. Radio actually stopped working. I mean, not stopped working, but it stopped being on with the key off. So that one works properly. So let me unplug the battery and tell you all of my other symptoms that I had so that you can basically relate if you have other symptoms. There we go, that's safer. So like I said before, we dig into the repair. By the way, this is not going to be uh, an exact how to fix it. It's gonna be how I'm gonna fix it type repair. So follow along, do whatever you have to do. This is just how I'm doing it. Basically other issues I had was at first when I started the truck, the odometer was going crazy. It was displaying a bunch of like matrix looking signs and it was going nuts didn't at, did not display the uh, odometer reading properly at all another thing wipers nothing i had no wipers for the first minute oh by the way the odometer thing only happened when the headlights were on and it was dimming if it was not dim 
it would display the odometer. Next thing, like I said, was the radio and the HVAC. On my way to work, the four wheel drive kept going on and off, like it was literally engaging four wheel drive on me and then disengaging, but fast. It was like click, 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 click. It was going crazy. Those were the only, <laughs> the only issues that I experienced while driving. Once I got to work, I shut off the engine and pulled the key out and the blower motor stayed on or the whole HVAC system stayed on just like you just saw. And then I said, okay, well, how about if I press the off button? Sure, that turned off the screen, but that made the blower motor go full blast. So obviously that didn't work. So I unplugged the blower motor. Then in the afternoon, came home. I noticed that every time I took it out of park and put it into any gear, as long as it was not in park, it would shut off all the dome lights and it would deactivate my windows. So the only way to use the windows was to be in park and actually sometimes neutral. If it was in gear, it wouldn't do it. If it was in park or neutral, it would work. But if you waited long enough in gear, it would reactivate those things. Super weird. And then obviously, like I just showed you earlier, I'll play the clip again. Last night when I got home, I heard the sizzling. And I was like, okay, this has to stop and we have to fix it before this thing catches on fire. So enough with the talking, let's get to work. First thing is like you just saw, remove all these covers. Next, we have to remove the whole knee panel here. So let's do that. So let's remove this trim panel along the steering column on both sides and we'll pop it out of the way. Well, I guess you don't have to remove it all the way. You just have to push it up because it clips onto this panel that we are after. Next, I would want to remove these covers that I just removed. And then we'll grab a seven millimeter so we can get both of these uh, handles off, one for the e-brake, one for the hood. Take some uh, screws out on both sides, as well as one up here that hold this panel on. They're all seven millimeter. I think now we can pull it out. Move the door seal out of the way. Uh-oh, did I miss one? Oh, I know what I missed. These two have to go. Yep. All right, ignore this wire. This is for another gadget that came with the truck. We'll put that out of the way and this is what we're after right here. So we have two 10 millimeter nuts, two 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, let's get these four out. So if you look on the back side of the fuse box, you'll see these two bolts. We're gonna have to remove them and this will unbolt two main connectors that sit here. These are both 10 millimeter. There's one. Let's do the other one. There we go. All right, so set these two aside. Hopefully neither of these two have water in them. Guess we'll have to inspect it after. Now at this point, I need to push up on this little tab here, pry it up and out of the way so I can push the fuse box and the whole module back, just like that. I think I'm gonna have to take these relays out to create clearance as it slides down. Just wiggle them out of the way. These two bottom black ones are the same, so it doesn't matter which goes where. And um, just remember that there isn't one up top. And then I'll just take this yellow one out as well. We'll set those aside. And we can slide this whole thing down. There's a wire clipped in on the bottom of this. Let's go ahead and get that off of there. Okay, unclip it. 
Actually, you might as well disconnect it because the wire. There we go. Another connector for it. This might give you some more wiggle room. I'm going to disconnect this connector over here. Okay. Push that out. This I cannot disconnect. Um, but at least I made room with this. Okay. Push that. Get this out of the way. There, there we go. That's moving a little better now. Um, now we can get to the connectors. If you look in there, you can see the electrical connectors. I'm going to go ahead and unplug them, if I can. Okay, there's one. I think I need a screwdriver. I know we have one more connector left on here, but I'm hoping that it'll come down and then I can disconnect it once it's down. Oh yeah, there's definitely plenty of slack for it to come down. It's just a matter of space, I think. Okay. All right. I guess we could have disconnected all three over here. It would have been a lot easier. Regardless, here it is. This is what we're after, and now we have to open it all up, check for water. I know there is some, because it was literally sizzling. So let's do that. While I'm at it, I'm gonna inspect these, and I might even spray them with some silicone spray to ensure that they are not wet. Might even open up the connectors. Regardless, we have to figure it out. Well, I guess let's open this thing up. It's got some Torx screws here, so I'll have to grab a socket for that. But it also has this little cap. Let's start by opening up the cap and seeing what's underneath. We'll take it layer by layer, basically, until we can get to the problem. Okay, I don't see any moisture in here. Yes, I guess I have to go grab the socket now. Okay, I grabbed a T20. Okay, wiggle this, undo the connection. I might take this apart again, pop it open, take the circuit board out of it to check the other side. For now, let's continue so i was messing with this trying to figure out how to take it apart and it turns out we have to take these two out and everything however check this out if i pry it open over here look at all that that's uh that's our problem right there all right i came up with a thought here so you can see that there is a hex cut out there imprinted into the plastic what that means is this bolt is well the stud has a bolt head over there and on the other side they have machined the insert and it is basically spread out and looks like a half of a rivet basically on uh, the back side so i'm gonna grab my drill and drill the top of it out let's do that all right so i got myself a drill bit that's gonna fit in there and basically i'm just gonna drill it out just like a rivet let's see what happens Oh, all right. Well, don't do that. Get a bigger drill bit. That's uh, bigger. Well, hey, learn from my mistake, huh? As long as it's still got threads, we're good because we can reattach that connector. Yay, that's exactly what I wanted. Didn't necessarily want to drill all the way down. I'm gonna keep the junk in here and then I'll go throw this in the trash, but let's do the other one. All right. Oh yeah, now we're talking. All right, I got rid of the shavings. Now we should be able to just slide this thing up. 
like that. Oh yeah, that's working. Just be careful because the internals are gonna be stuck to this part, not the bottom, but they do unclip. Just, you know, be careful. These small ones can stay. The big one, um, this one, I want to take out. We have to clean all day. Yep, look at the water. I knew it. If for some reason you don't know where these go, you can see that they're numbered, and so is this. This is all numbered, so you can put them back just like this, snap them in. Well, there you go. This is exactly what we are after. You can see the water everywhere in there. So we're gonna clean this all up. I'm gonna load it with silicone paste. Silicone paste, silicone spray. If you have to, even WD-40 will do. Just make sure you don't load it up too much, but there you have it. This is, uh, this is exactly what we need to clean up. Take these, take these out of here and start cleaning. Here's the tricky part. There's actually another layer underneath, so we're gonna have to peel this up, clean underneath, which means we have to pick up all these connectors here, all these, uh, whatever they're called, you know what I mean, all these. So I'm going to flip them over. The ones that are numbered, I'm not going to worry about putting them back. gonna have to keep digging until there's no more water. It's gonna be so much fun putting this back together. More! There's there are more there are more layers basically is this is great. I guess there will be layers until these stop showing up. Makes sense. is what I have to clean now so that's great so here's the deal I have this table set up I have some baking soda mixed into water not a heavy concentration of baking soda just a little bit and I'm gonna use these plastic brushes and as I clean off the corrosion I'm gonna mix it with baking soda so that I neutralize any corrosion that is there and I'm gonna let it dry I probably will use the hair dryer or a blow gun or whatever to uh, completely dry it up, make sure that it is 100% done. And after it's dried up, I'm gonna use some of the silicone spray, spray the top and the bottom of each of these panels with silicone spray. And I already tested it out on this main board here. What it does is it does soak into the plastic a little bit, but it is safe for plastic being silicone. And it actually leaves an oily coating so that in the future, water will not make contact 
and will not corrode things. Obviously, we have to address the issue, the issue being water leaking in here. So I have to find the source. Most likely it's gonna be around the windshield and then seal it up. But in order to prevent corrosion, I will coat these in some silicone paste or uh, silicone spray. I do have some silicone paste as well, which I'm gonna apply to the main connectors that bolt on to, uh, well, I guess it would be here and here, but that is for when we reinstall. For now, let's just get this cleaned up, all of that, and uh, reassembled, and then we'll put it back in the truck. Check this out right here. Remember that sizzling noise? I think I know exactly what was happening. This was sparking here. That's crazy. Check out this water, that is gross. The white balance doesn't really, oh there we go, it's getting a little darker. It's a little bit darker in person, I'm not gonna lie, the white balance actually fixes it. But it's like a light brown color with a lot of sediment at the bottom. That is gross. That's all junk that came off of there and it's not just dirt, debris and dust, it's like actual corrosion that came off but regardless everything is cleaned up so now we just have to dry it and make sure that we spray it I mean this is optional obviously if you just fix your leak it should be good but I'm gonna spray it just in case give it a nice hydrophobic coating so that everything is future-proofed
everything is done, cleaned, sprayed. Let's put it all back together. The small tabs go on the bottom, big tabs up towards the top. And another way of figuring it out is, uh, well, the, the plastic is always on the top and the metal bars, rods, whatever you want to call these on the bottom. And now all you have to do is just center it up, press it down. Um, obviously I, you have to remember the order. You can't just put them all in random order. They won't fit, so you'll eventually figure it out, but if you keep them in a specific order, it'll be a lot easier to figure it out. I had, I was doubting the way that this layer seated itself. And when it comes to this, you're better off removing it and putting it back on. It turns out everything was fine, but you're better off removing it, putting it back on, as opposed to putting it on, risking one of these bending over, not making connection or worse, connecting to something else. Then you have to take it all back apart. Uh, but also that can be a fire hazard. So I just have to put all these back again and we'll put it in. Well, I guess there you have it. We'll find out if it worked, if certain things don't have power. So these popped out. Okay, I'm gonna straighten out these connectors. These all seem good. Okay, so they're all through all the way. I have to straighten these out because these are kind of crooked here. Just make them all line up so that the connector can go on and then we'll and then we'll go put it in the truck. All right, so we're back at the truck. Let's reassemble. So I did open this up. Actually, I said I would. I didn't show it. I did open it up. Everything's nice and clean. There's nothing to fix in here. No water, anything like that. So let's uh, reconnect this. Wiggle it down. That connects perfectly. Let's re-secure it. Okay. 
So I'm gonna plug in, it seems like one of these connectors is very long. The other one is a little shorter. The other one's actually very short. It won't reach, so I'll have to connect it at the end. So I'm gonna connect this longest one first, which I believe was the bottom one. There we go. And now we just have to fish this back up into place. Make sure that these connectors line up. This is gonna be not so fun. I know you can't see it, but at this point I'm gonna reconnect the other two connectors because they can, they can reach. Right, and now we just have to slide it up into place. Okay, I got both large connectors on the back side situated. Let's try and line it up. Ooh. All right, so this just fell into place. You know what, since I'm here, let's bolt it up on the front. Make sure that this little clip clips in. Let's go to the back and bolt up the two wires. Alright, let's get these two connectors bolted up. There's one, and there's two. Oh. Okay, that's tight. I lost my socket. That's awesome. I love it when that happens. And tight. Okay, over here there were some wires that I had to disconnect. Honestly, I don't even know where the retainers for them are supposed to be, so I'm just gonna tuck them out of the way here. It'll be just fine. I did pull down this bracket that held on several wires. It was connected to the steering column brace, so I'm just gonna push that back on, re-secure it, and I remember unplugging, there it is. I unplugged this large connector here. Definitely got to plug that back in. Make sure that clicks. This is your shifter cable indicator. Everything else is plugged in. Relays, let's get relays in. So we have the two black relays on the bottom. And then, I don't remember if it went here or here, this little yellow one. Let me check the footage. Mystery solved, it goes here on the lower one, but not that way. There we go. Before I put anything else back on, because I'm not in need of any connectors or anything like that, like everything's plugged in, all I have to put on is covers. Let's reconnect the battery and see if everything works as it should. All right, let's reconnect the battery. That's good. Okay. Well, if you remember before, we were getting a bunch of click noises every time we connected the battery. Go ahead and use your battery terminal positioner. Position that into place. And then uh, use your same battery terminal tightener. Tighten that back up. Okay. Well. I don't smell fire, so that's good. Let's see, do we have HVAC? No, good. That's a good sign. Let's get the key in. We have dome light. We do, it's just, hello. It's old. It'll come on in a second. All right, let's see. Okay. 
Cancel demo. Yep. Ooh, okay. Hey, look at that. All right. And then if we turn it back, this is the on position. If we turn it back to accessory, it should just light up the radio. Yep, because that's our only accessory in this truck. Okay, just for the heck of it, test out this. Yep. Shut up, blower motor. Um, what else is weird? Gauge cluster. I mean, you can't see it because my flash is on, but you know, the odometer dims. Headlights. Yep, I got headlights. Automatic headlights. Fancy. Okay. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> the other dome light came on. Do we have any warning lights? Nope. Door jar works. Oh, that's the other thing. The door jar light only came on when the engine was off. As soon as I shut the, or as soon as I started the engine, there was no more uh, door sensor at all. Like they just stopped working. All right, so I think we can button this back up now. All right, let's get everything back up. Um, let's see. I guess I'm gonna put this over here so it's out of my way. Cover for the fuse box. That's not the way it goes. Okay. The main panel goes in now. Cover on. One last thing is going to be this. Okay, I think we fixed it. Well, there we go. That's how I fixed, well, partially fixed that problem because the actual fix is going to be sealing up everything. So I'm going to do that once the uh, summer's here uh, for the winter. This is exactly how I'm gonna leave it. It's been like this for years. I sealed it up. It's gonna be fine until the summer. Obviously, like I said, I'm gonna have to take the windshield seals off and get this taken care of here. Obviously, this is a huge gap in there. Not acceptable. Not good, Ford, not good. So I'm gonna see what I can do about that. Um, I did have Oh, see, there you go, there's water. I did have uh, rust accumulation here that I painted, or I cleaned up and then I painted. So could this also affect it? Yes, it could, but I'm pretty certain that I sealed up these holes, otherwise there wouldn't be a puddle here. And um, if you have any other suspicions, obviously you'd go ahead and fix it. As for my issue, for now, it's done. This is how I did it. Again, this was not the proper procedure. The proper procedure, like I said, is to seal everything up. So the battery's good. Let's close the hood. Stay tuned for many more videos coming on this truck. As always, it's nighttime again. If it's not nighttime, is it even one of my videos? So again, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. I just wanted to add this at the end of the video. It has been several months. Everything still works just fine. There's no key in the ignition. Nothing's on. Everything is still perfect as I left it. I did not reseal the windshield yet. It just started getting warm outside. So I will take all those seals off and reseal it when the time comes. But for now, everything is still working just fine.